President Trump says the report more than anything, quote, totally exonerates him. No collusion, no obstruction. Let's bring in tonight's panel, which I'm guessing may or may not agree on that. Uh, advisor, former advisor to President Bill Clinton, Mark Penn, and the chairman of the American Conservative Union, Matt Schlapp. Welcome to you both, gentlemen. Evening. Great to be here. Okay, an interesting piece that you guys may have read, Andy McCarthy, who is a former federal prosecutor well known to our audience, a Fox News contributor, uh, he's been writing on these issues for months about these investigations. And basically he said it didn't seem like common sense to him that the IG walked us through everything, those biased texts. He said, yes, there was political bias, support for Hillary, uh, an animus against President Trump. But at the end of the day, the... the um, you know, actions that were taken were justified. They were reasonable. Uh, Andy McCarthy writes that that's just not common sense. You can't look at things in a vacuum. Uh, and of course, they're connected. What do you say, Mark? Well, I think that the inspector general applied a standard of was there a justification aside from politics for everything that was done? And he concluded that there, by and large, was a justification. Now, you don't have to look at the report with the same standard that he used, because I think that you really have to read the whole report to see the facts here and the culture of bias that was underneath uh, his findings. And when it does come to, when it comes to Peter Strzok, he does single Strzok out and say, you know, when it comes to the Russia investigation, mm -hmm. he did exhibit real animus. So, so I, I, I think, look, Hillary comes out of this pretty good because he basically said that investigation was, was justified mm -hmm. and is basically over. I don't think we're going to repeat that. But Trump also comes out of this pretty good because it looks like there's some real bias going mm -hmm. into the Russia investigation. Yeah, and Matt, that was a door that was left open. On page 13 of the executive summary, it says, most of the text messages raising the questions pertain to the Russia investigation, basically saying that's not what we're investigating. And the implication in some of these text messages, particularly Strzok's August 8th text message, the one that said, quote, we'll stop candidate Trump from being elected, was that Strzok might be willing to take official action to impact a presidential candidate's electoral prospects. Now, Strzok did for a time work on the Russia investigation, so does it leave a door open for you? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing I learned is that we failed to remember some basic things, that the very top people at the FBI, the director and the deputy director, were fired that these other agents that are referred to in the IG report had very senior positions in the FBI, and they were very, very aggressive by injecting politics into all these decisions, Shannon. And I think what really struck me by reading both Andy McCarthy's piece and Byron York's great writings as well is that there was that one tweet, or excuse me, that one uh, message. Well, when they when Ted Cruz drops out and there's this conversation about oh now we've really got to get serious uh, on the uh, midterm review and we've got to stop Trump. So what the Russia investigation was never really an investigation. It was never really about finding wrongdoing. It was about the politics of stopping Trump. And what I disagree with Mark a little bit is it's the polar opposite when it came to Hillary. It was about clearing Hillary so she could stop Donald Trump. It was all about getting Trump and Trump called it for what it was and I can see why he feels like this report makes the whole idea of having a special counsel pretty silly. All right, Ben Shapiro writes this of the IG Review. I'm not making the case that there was a broad-based, well-organized conspiracy inside the FBI to stop President Trump, but it is obvious from the available evidence that, one, certain high-ranking actors inside the FBI felt the necessity to stop Trump from becoming president and were willing to act under color of authority to do so. And two, the leading actors inside the FBI assumed that Hillary would be president and tailored their actions based on that assumption. Mark, the IG goes before the Senate and House on Monday. What do you think you'll get asked? Well, I, I think, as, as, as was said before, Democrats are going to say, no bias, no bias, right? Wasn't this reasonable? It was reasonable. Republicans are going to do exactly the opposite and say, how could you say this is reasonable? He is going to play it right down the middle, just like his report does. So when people try to get an advantage out of him, I don't think anybody's going to get an advantage, except he really slams Comey. And so I think you could really expect him to be consistent. And hey, the, the actual story of Comey hiding what he was going to do from the attorney general is incredible. I, I, I couldn't even write that for a, hmm. for a movie script, that he's going to rush to the microphone, never yeah. tell the attorney general who he reports to. That is more than insubordination. Yeah, that was, he did not come out well. A very quick final word to you, Matt. 
Yeah, and I think, Mark, the other point it makes is that for all those Democrats who have been saying somehow the FBI is over here isolated by itself as a fourth branch of government, it really reminds everyone, reminds all of us that the FBI reports to the DOJ, which reports to the President of the United States, and it's called the executive branch, and it's, the President was right to fire Jim Comey. All right, gentlemen, Mark, Matt, great to see you both. We'll see what happens on Monday.